H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. A web service client. So here they have used an annotation called web service client, which will be going to inform to your Jack's WS that this is a web service client. And the name is nothing but your service name and the WSL location, your actual location of the service and the target namespace, that is fine. And once after that, see normally socket to socket communication between two different systems will be going to use the socket communication, but your JAX-WS or your container will be going to handle all the low level calls, but it's your responsibility to generate a URL object first and will be going to provide that URL object to the container or web service, which will be going to create or establish the connection to the server. So once you have created, see here you can see that this is a static block, which means during only once this block will be loaded. And whenever you have, <coughs> whenever you are going to process the client request, this URL object will be going to create it only once because we won't be changing the URL object because this is related to the server so we'll be going to it's it's necessity for us for loading only one time into the memory once after you have created an URL object there are two methods available get temperature conversion soap get temperature conversion soap with no parameters and here you can see that web service feature dot 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 features so what kind of a parameter is this can anyone tell me what kind of a parameter is this We have discussed in Java features class. Yeah, Priyanka. Sorry. This is Verox. If you guys remember this we had discussed in our traditional Java features class. Are you guys able to memorize now the Verox arguments? Yeah, thanks for the rest of the people. I have seen the response from three, four people. Yeah. Yeah. See, don't don't forget any core Java features because you will definitely going to get at any point of time. If, if at all, if you move to any of the advanced concepts, you will definitely going to get all the core Java concepts. Okay, here they are using one particular method, which is get temperature conversion soap. So, by using this temperature conversion soap. On the top, what we have mentioned, this is a service. Go to your service now. Your service consists of a port. So what is the name of the port? Your name of the port is temperature conversion soap. So for this particular one, they have provided a getter method. So once you have created a service object, you can call the getter method to retrieve the port. So once you have retrieved the port, you have the access to all the methods by using the port. Just now only we have seen all the methods how to access by using port type. 
So your starting place is temperature conversions, which is your web service client, which was created. And after that, you'll be going to call the method get temperature service conversion soap, which will be going to internally call super dot get port, which means it will be going to call which will be going to call your service get port method. So there it will be going to establish the connection to your server at the specified IP address. This method will do that particular part. What are all the next classes? Get temperature conversion soap type IMPL. As mentioned, this is just an implementation for your SOAP type, which consists of a dummy implementation for you, all your methods. So uh, no need to bother about this because we are not going to call these methods. Now go to your actual client code. This is your actual client code. You can see the temperature conversion SOAP type underscore temperature conversion SOAP underscore client. See, at any point of time, your queue name specifies the namespace or XML qualified namespace and uh, your WSTL is uh, or your JAX WS is very strict about the queue name. If you didn't specify the slashes or the elements properly, it won't call the web service. Here we are using the standalone client. You can see that I'm using the main method. Come down. Here you can see that I'm creating an object for temperature conversions. Temperature conversions is nothing but your service. I'm creating an object for your service. And uh, where is my class? And once after that, I'm calling the get temperature conversion soap, which means it will be going to retrieve a port for me. See, just, just just for our understanding, they have used the object name as port. Go to your WSTL. So you are asking temperature conversions dot get temperature conversion soap, which will be going to retrieve a port object. So what you will think is you will be going to create one object and will be going to retrieve a port. But normally what it will do is it will be going to contact the server and will be going to establish the connection at that time and will be going to handle, you can think like it will be going to handle an object for you from the remote location. Once you got, once you got the port object from the port, from the port, where is your port? So, from your port, you have the access to all the methods like Celsius to foreign heat or wind chill in Celsius or the vice versa kind of stuff, any kind of methods. So just like how you will be able to access the methods from an object in the same way here also, you will be able to access those methods. Where is my client? So once you go to the port, so if you place port dot, you will be able to see all the methods that are available with respect to your port. So your port consists of all the operations. Go to your WSTL. Your port, see currently what we have done from the service, from the service, we are going to the port, which is this one, and from the port, we are going to all these methods. That's what we are doing. Now, if you call a method, like uh, execute the method with respect to, let us say I'm passing one value. So currently this one is converting from Celsius to foreign heat. So just place it as zero as of now. And I don't want to work on remaining methods. Just comment those stuff. I'm just interested only to work on converting Celsius to foreign heat. And I'm passing zero. 
and underscores and all are available if you want you can just change the names for your convenience or else leave it as it is so finally it will be going to call the method celsius to foreign heat and will be going to pass the value it was in big decimal format and it will be going to respond back with some value and i am just printing that value and here we have mentioned about wsl location which is nothing but our url so our url currently we are not at all talking to our local server we are talking to some location which is web services dot tae hosting dot com this particular location we are talking now i'm connected to internet so i can easily send a request over the internet to the service provider and uh, i can contact the service and can get the response so let us go and execute this program now normally it won't take that much time my system is very slow in working celsius to foreign heat and you can see that it has sent the request to that and it was able to receive the response as 32 for zero it is 32 that is correct change the value and enter some other number 20 probably it will return as 64 kind of stuff so the service provider is up and running and we are able to communicate to the service provider over the web and we are able to retrieve the result are you guys able to understand now at least some of the elements that are available and what is the purpose of all those elements and how those elements are related to wstl file is that clear sort of okay yeah we'll discuss that question once after the class sandeep No, it's not at all required. I just explained only for your purpose. The next topic is how to handle the fault-related stuff. So, create the web service for this. Does my server is up? deploy a web service see currently i have created a web service using dynamic web project so that means uh, i can just copy the related files like web nf and meta nf2 the tomcat location and i can deploy the file i can deploy the application i'm sorry okay krishna my question was you know are we going to do something uh, different with uh, now with respect to web service when compared to a uh, regular uh, web application in in terms of deployment no you can directly deploy it as a normal uh, application normal web application to the tomcat server if you want to deploy it in using uh, uh, if you want to deploy it sorry i started with some other question if you want to deploy using enterprise server so you have the option of writing the ant script and your ant script consists of the tools like wsdl to java whatever that we have discussed with respect to apache cx you just need to provide such information like uh, what is the tool name wstl to java that you want to perform and give the name of the wstl file and provide the location for source files and the location for dependent class files so all those information will be going to provided with the ant command and it will be going to generate the required files for your java objects or the jaxp classes 
and you will be going to wrap it up using a var file and will be going to deploy into the server okay krish thanks man yes you welcome yeah those ant command will be going to discuss uh, during this weekend or next week but uh, uh, once after that we'll see how to generate the var file using ant script yeah i guess varashmi has asking for another question here where are we using marshalling and unmarshalling like we used in jaxp it's not required for us to do the process will be taken care by our jaxws all that it needs is the jaxp classes available and the marshalling or unmarshalling and everything will be going to do internally by your jaxws and then it will be going to wrap up the soap layer and then communicates with the server Yeah, I want to generate in the same project level. Apache access CXF 2.x. The reason why I have explained the marshalling and unmarshalling is uh, just for our understanding purpose. How the Java object is converted to an XML. Hmm. Did we clear the client? Any time, create an SEI service endpoint interface. Ops calculation service. Select one method. Click on next. Generate client only. No need of going for server. The same example. So what I have done is uh, instead of placing it as an integer, we have converted that into string values now. So the parameter can be accepted by using strings. So we'll see what happens if we pass the string values now. string operations the server code it got deployed onto the tomcat go and verify the wstl that got generated so this is the wstl that got generated by our apache cxf and this is the endpoint location go and verify in Internet Explorer, whether it was opening the WSTL or not. It was opening the WSTL, so the application was deployed properly onto the server. It's the same WSTL instead of uh, integers. Now it consists of string values. This is the only change. Now the client code it was there in a separate project. So in the same way, it consists of some classes related to Jaxp and Object Factory and uh, our standard four classes. Go to our port client. 
verify whether the WST location was pointing correctly or not. Yes, it is pointing correctly. Come back to the method and change the values. So currently I am entering 10, 35. Just trigger a request whether we are able to receive the positive response or not. Java application. Invoking add, add dot result equal to 45. So that means our service is working fine. Now I'm just stopping the Tomcat server here because it will be going to collide with my client. I will start from my normal windows. Watch it on cat. The best consists of string operations. Fine. Go to bin. Start up. See our client and server both are available at the same same location. So if we make use of the same then the logs will get overridden. Now the request will be going to trigger here and we can see the server processing in our Tomcat. Server got started. Found executed it now. This is the SOAP that got generated. Yesterday we have seen this. Argument 10 and argument 35. Finally, it will be going to respond with return value which is 45. Now go and change this to some string. See, normally it should throw an exception at the server level itself because uh, our ops calculation here we are doing here what we are doing, we are converting it into an integer. So while converting the parseInt method will be going to throw a number format exception. Go and run the program now. What happened to this? It is not processing the request. It was in running mode. Let me restart the clips. Meanwhile, we will take a look at uh, the elements. See until now how we are receiving the response 
क्या श्रीनाथ गौर है um gosh actually i'm sorry i'm not able to really catch everything but uh, can you just at a high level give me you know it's state the bullet points you know, when you need to create a web service so basically what i understood is you created a stray uh, same plain old simple java class and then you use the apache cxf utility to create all the to convert that thing into a web service and after that what are the things that you mm-hmm. need to check you know to run that thing could you state that at just a high level point again i know you went through it, all the different files I was trying to you know catch you know view but i was not really able to catch everything so can you just in a brief at a high level what are the things that we need to do we need to look for after those classes classes are generated to run that yeah what you want to do is you can just go through the yesterday's class the recorded okay. session okay you will be definitely able to place all the required files and uh, what you can do is you can create one web service application just okay. write a small class in your eclipse and configure the apache cxf okay and once after that just follow the recorded session you will definitely able to understand all the class files created okay i'm looking for just you know four or five bullet points that i need to do you know but oh yeah correct that's yeah okay. yeah that's fine yeah and more, okay. and in today's class also i have explained uh, the same whatever that we have discussed yesterday i just elaborated them and explained it again one more time so did you miss okay. any of the points or uh, are you not able to understand any of the stuff that i have explained i think you know just like going between the files you know it was it's just way too fast for me i'm not able to really just you know okay you know pay really by the time i catch one thing and really truly really sinks in you know it's really fast you know we move on to the next thing but it's okay i can go back and listen to the recording and then try to get that that's fine okay yeah because what i want to show is i just want to show the interaction between the wsdl and the java conversion and by looking at the wsdl file i guess uh, the code will be easy to understand okay if you are able to understand the wsdl file by looking at the wsdl file then yeah by looking at this wsdl interaction it will be very much easy to understand how our java code communicates between these two elements between these elements okay thank you yeah you will yeah if at all if you are not able to then let me know okay yeah let us execute it now it is not able to process the request and there are no error messages also let me debug this one problem with the our tomcat server why it is not taking the request
it was not able to open the WSTL file. Let me restart our Tomcat server. Oh. Oops, something got piled off. H2K Emphasis provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Emphasis, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com.